Greetings, dear viewers! I'm Quill Quickcard, and welcome back to Final Fantasy. I have finally come to the town of Crescent Lake, where I actually can buy the dang spells that I want for Lopo. Specifically, I want Lightning 3. And I think that's all I can really offer for right now. But I do have four uses of warp available, so, you know, as long as I don't want to put out any, uh, fire threes, that's pretty good. So the last time we went through the top half of the sunken shrine, and we got a slab. The slab needs to come over here. Okay, that is elf land. I am way south east of where I need to be here. Uh, here we go. So we take the slab to a random guy in this town. My warrior thanks to you, the earth is beginning to revive. Yes. Thank you, random dwarf. That's the guy up there. You know, I gotta say, after meeting the mermaids last time, I greatly respect the conversational skills of dwarves much more. A slab! This slab will lead us to solve the riddle of the leaf finish. Now listen to me. So now I have to go to another town. Basically, there is a town, one town I haven't visited yet, called Leafheim. Or Leafen. And the people in this town, if I had gone there before now, were completely unintelligible. Uh, basically, they, they had dialogue, but it was all useless dialogue. But now, that problem is solved. Now they can actually talk to me, which is nice. And let's see. The town is over here, a very long walk. Specifically because there is nowhere to land the airship. Yeah, nowhere. None of these spots will let you land the airship. The closest you can land to Leafheim is here. And of course we take one step <laughs> One step and there's a Tyrannosaurus. Sure! Why well, I mean that that might as well happen. I might as well take one step and fight a Tyrannosaurus. Uh Leafin also does not have any ends. Uh, it does have a shop for level 8 magic. Uh, but that's it. It has no other actual facilities. No item stores, no weapons or armor shops, no inn. So I can't uh, heal up once I get there. I have to walk all the way there and all the way back. But that's actually not really much of a problem anymore. Uh, I mean, you saw how easily that Tyrannosaur went down, and now we're fighting things that were in, like, the frickin' Earth Dungeon, okay? These are not a threat to me. So, I'm not particularly worried about that. Uh, but there's one guy in Leafen that I have to talk to. Uh, he will give me an item that I use in order to enter the next dungeon. Well, not really the next dungeon. I mean, the next place I'm supposed to go is the Sunken Shrine, but like I said, we're just skipping over that, and uh, I'm actually heading to the uh, Flying Fortress in order to get some treasure there. Because we're going to power up my team even more than they are already powered up. And that is not a small boast. 
My team is not exactly weak, you know? Okay. Let's do this. Come on, come on, come on. Excellent. Almost there. Just a little farther. There's the town. It's a shame that so little is actually done with this town, though. Um, because it's actually quite pretty, to be honest. Yeah, go Lopo! See, Lopo can crit a Tyrannosaurus for 80 damage. That is the power of the Cat Claw that I spent 65,000 gold on for absolutely no reason. It may look like I have a lot of money right now. And, to be fair, I do. Especially since, after last episode, I actually uh, ground up Quill to level 19 just to see if he'd get, you know, a 6th level slot. He didn't. Uh, so, yeah, I have over 134,000 gold. That sounds like a lot. But the fact is that once he gets 6th level slots, uh, Quill alone is going to take 60,000 gold just to buy his 6th level spells. And 7th level spells are 45,000 apiece. We are the Lefinish. Only your bravest became Sky Warriors. Your airship was theirs. Okay, so... This is the ancient civilization. Oh, the Night Warriors, the legend is true. Yeah, sure, why not? We're, we're them. At the time of destruction, a legend was born. In 400 years, warriors with orbs will appear to save our people. Are you... Yeah, the whole destruction of the world thing started 400 years ago. Uh, and... I mean, that must suck when the world starts getting destroyed and, uh... You know, you go running out for help and you find some sage and he's like, Oh yeah, we got this! In 400 years. Floating castle. Our ancestors lived there. The Mirage Tower is the entrance. Uh, I do want to make a quick stop over here. This is where you buy 8th uh, level spells. Specifically the ultimate 8th level spells. Only Lopo's going to be able to learn one. And he is going to learn Nuke eventually. Because sometimes you just want to drop a Nuke on your enemies. Hello. Yeah, I know there's nothing there. Our last five warriors left to find the cause of the world's decay. We know they live, but as bats. That's a strange thing to know. The power of wind was taken by Tiamat. We fought with Tiamat, but were unsuccessful. The fiend now inhabits our floating castle. With this chime, you can enter the Mirage Tower. That's what I came here to get. And we've also apparently learned that long ago these people sent out five great warriors to try and save the world, and apparently they sucked so hard at it that they turned into bats. Because, you know, why not? I mean, last time we met some people in a town who were j Oh! That is concerning! I'm going to drop a fire three and hope that nobody lives next turn to drop frost breath on me. That is actually, actually quite horrifying. Uh, oh my. Those things were a real problem back at the ice cavern. Yikes. Oh, good. Good job, Anna. We're very proud of you leveling up. Do, 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 do. What other enemies are out here? Come on, show me something new. Ah, zombie bullmen. Yeah, okay, whatever. I can handle zombie bullmen. That's not so bad. Ah, so parched. 
So how far do I want to go today? Um... I will see if I can get through... Yeah, I will see if I can get to the floating castle. I think that'll be a good stopping point for today. So that's still a ways off. Uh, but I will want to go stay at an inn real quick before I head there. Uh, just because I did use up, uh, you know, that that level 5 spell slot for my fire. And uh, I am really going to want uh, all my uses of the warp spell in order to get out of the flying fortress. Uh, cause that place I am not yet ready to take on the Fiend of Wind. Yeah. Okay, this is not a first strike. That is alarming. Lopo, please go early and take them out. Yes, Quill, please kill most of these wolves. If they all use their frost breath, that would actually be very threatening. Uh, thank you, Lopo. Yes, excellent. Oh boy, those things still make me nervous. Uh, a lot of the enemies that can actually do uh, elemental damage to the whole party, a lot of those make me nervous. Ah, these things, I recall, hit very, very hard and are particularly annoying to kill. Yeah, even Jeb can only put out 73 damage on them. Oh boy, Anna. Alright, and Anna did a bit better, but they still hurt. Ankleos do a lot of damage. Alright, let's drop even more of our fire threes on these things. Come on, come on. I just realized I'm pretty sure Quill can learn to warp. But, then again, we already have Lopo for warp, so we're fine. Yes! Alright, good. But, those things suck, because they give so little gold. Although the experience is nice, especially since I really, really want those, uh... Those, uh, level 6 spell slots for, uh, for Quill. It's very annoying waiting around for those. Come on, I just need to stay at the end. Doesn't really matter how much ends cost anymore. Yeah, 500. 500 gold, whatever. I'll get that back in, at most, two fights. Now that we've gotten that chime, there is a tower here in the desert, and I can finally go into this tower. And then that tower will lead to the Flying Fortress. But first... There, just a quick save. First I have to reach the tower. Which, to be honest, I'm really not that worried about. I mean... Oh no, it's a Tyrannosaurus. I... I've killed a lot of you guys. You're not that dangerous to me. Yeah, especially when Jeb can hit like that. Come on, Quill. Yep, good boy. Good job, Lopo, finishing him off. You know, maybe Lopo went to the same magic school as the wizard enemies. You know, the one that just teaches you how to beat the crap out of people. Alright. First things first, there's a lot of treasure in this room. Hmm, bad man. I don't like Batman. I think... Uh, I don't really think there's anything particularly dangerous about him. 
Uh, although it is really amusing that, uh, I mean, he just looks really tiny. <laughs> I think it's actually just kind of cute. Uh, he, he looks like a much less intimidating Garland, doesn't he? Oh, silly little bad man. Oh, that's adorable. Whatever, the nightmares are no threat to me. Come on, heal up and let's get going. There is one treasure chest in this room. Uh, no, I might as well get it. There, there's a Vorpal Sword in one of the chests in this room, and uh, the Vorpal Sword is weaker than uh, a lot of the other stuff that I'm using right now. I think Quill is still using an elemental sword. Uh, I think it might actually be stronger than whatever Quill is using. Uh, but it doesn't really like have any special effects. It's not particularly strong against anything. It doesn't cast any effects. It's literally just a sword. Alright, what do we got? So here we... Please... Cut that out. Oh, vampires! Well, we know what to do with vampires, don't we? <laughs> Aw, oh, remember when these guys were a boss? Now they can't do anything. Ah, oh, silly little vampires. <laughs> Oh, it's so much fun watching former bosses go down easily. Excellent work, my warriors. Keep them coming! Alright, that's a cabin. That'll be useful when I finally get out of here. Uh, there's also a robot up there. Alright, here's some gold. A healing helmet. This is a very important item. Uh, the healing helmet. Can a ninja actually wear that? Hmm. Okay, uh, let me do a quick check. What is it with the silver helmet? Is 52? 52, okay. Uh,. Then the silver helmet has now been completely replaced. Because the heal helmet does exactly what it sounds like it would do. It is another item that can cast heals on demand. And I love things that can cast heals on demand. And I believe that there is another healing helm later on in this uh, castle. So, let's see. Quill, his damage right now is at 40. And down to 35. Yeah, so... The Vorpal Sword is weaker than my weakest weapon right now. And uh, that Light Axe that I found last episode is also weaker. So... It's actually surprising that this late in the game, they give you things that are specifically not upgrades. Uh, the Opal Shield, right now his damage, or right now his Absorb is at 74. Is the Aegis Shield stronger? Yes, it is. Okay. And we already established that Anna can't use the opals. Can you use the Aegis? No, you cannot. Okay. Uh, so I have to decide which one I want to keep. And I think I will keep the Aegis shield on Jet. Since, you know, he's the only one who can use it. Why not make use of it? Ooh, guards. Now, what are you guys? I think they're robots? Okay. But how much damage can you do? That's what I don't 
actually know. Alright, they can paralyze when they hit. So that's a bit of an issue. And Anna now has both uh, the Mage Staff and a Healing Helm. Uh, no, okay, Jeb has the Mage Staff. Anna has a Healing Helm. Uh, Quill has a Healing Staff. And then Lopo has a Zeus Gauntlet. Yeah, I, I am just rolling in the magic right now. It's also nice that item magic, uh, as far as I know, is not actually boosted in any way by a character's stats. Meaning that it is perfectly reliable no matter who you got. And I am curious what this uh, robot has to say. Hello, sir. Are you the master? Uh, yes. I am the master. I have returned at long last. And I would like for you to follow me and kill all the monsters. How does that sound? Does that sound like something you would enjoy, Mr. Robot? I would be very pleased if that would be something you could help me with. Alright, come on. They're just nightmares. Even Lopo can get in good hits on these things. Oh, those poor horsies. They just cannot compete with my damage output anymore. Go, Lopo! Lopo, that was a weak hit. You're making me look bad, okay? I don't want to look bad. Just do something more impressive. That was even less impressive. Lopo! Lopo, I bought you that weapon for a reason. Alright? So, that's all the treasure on this floor. Now, we will go up. The next floor actually has... Uh, a very annoying layout. I'm going to have to go all the way around it in basically a giant spiral. Oh, hey, it's more of the guards. Hi, guards. Uh, don't mind me, just passing through. Not, uh, not doing anything suspicious or, uh, you know, disruptive. Uh, Certainly not doing anything that you are programmed to stop people from doing. I mean, that's that's the last thing that I would do personally. Uh, but uh, further further up in the dungeon, uh, I I think I heard uh, that there's like a big uh, a big thing called Tiamat, and I heard that that guy's doing all sorts of stuff up there. You should definitely uh, head up that way and uh, see if you can stop it. Oh, and uh, if you find Warmack along the way, can you please tell him not to randomly pop up? Yeah. I live in absolute fear of that. What, what I'm talking about there specifically is, um, if you don't, if, if you're not aware, this game actually has... Uh, a super boss. And that's something that Final Fantasy wouldn't see again until Final Fantasy V. I believe. And of course they get Quill, so thanks a lot, Cockatrices. Very appreciative. Uh, on the top floor of the Flying Fortress, the same floor where you can fight the Fiend of Air, with every step that you take, there is a 1 in 64 chance of encountering an enemy called Warmack. Warmack is the most powerful enemy in the game. And he is a completely 
random encounter. He's not even a one-off. Potentially, you could have more than one step bring you to fight a Warmack. I mean, the chance of that are freaking low, but he's there. Warmack uses Nuke on the party. He is stupidly powerful. And Quill just missed out on over 1,300 experience because Quill just couldn't help himself and had to get turned to stone. Thank you very much, Quill. Ugh. Well, d oh, nope. Down and around. I have to remember, down and around. There is the staircase. Uh, but, of course, I can't reach it yet, which is very annoying. Yeah, it, it's kind of crazy how little spellcasting you actually do in this game once you gain access to spell items. And it really shows one of the big weaknesses of a spells per day system. Uh, at least in a video game setting where basically all of your spells are going to be specifically combat focused. Because eventually you reach a point where, like, everything on this list, this entire first page of lists of spells, is essentially useless to Lopo now. Uh, except for very specific fights where I'm going to really, really need ice damage. It's, it's just, it's just irrelevant. I can do as much or more damage using items that do not require a spell slot. I think that's one of the reasons why MP systems are better in video games. I do not believe I have fought these yet. Uh, I also believe these things know spells that hit the whole group, which is alarming. Uh, please be kind to me. Ah, okay, it's just cremate. It's the really weak fire version. Alright, that's, that's okay. I can deal with that. It's really impressive that they, uh, that they managed to do a lion head, a dragon head, a snake head, and wings on a sprite that size using only three colors. I mean, that, that really is impressive, isn't it? You, you have to admit, that is a good looking sprite, considering the limitations they were under to make it. It's been a while since I praised the sprite work in this game, but it never stops impressing me. It's just so good. Quill, please tell me you finally earned that spell slot. You did! Okay, so when I leave here, Quill will finally learn exit. One of us escaped with a cube. He floated far to the west! Yes, uh, he, he did float far to the west. Uh, that doesn't explain how he got into a waterfall, though. So, at some point... Oh, this is gonna suck. Yep, I'm, I'm gonna, like, get my whole team poisoned, aren't I? Yep. Yep, that's just the way it is with cat men. Oh, I hate you. I hate you so much. Okay, just... Just break out the usual stuff, you know? We're gonna be taking constant damage, and we're still not fully recovered after, uh... After the big mummy party, and, and then there was the chimera...
always with the poison. Always, always, always with the poison. I wish so much that it was not always with the poison. I would just like to be able to get through a dungeon without having to randomly reorganize my party. Without having to stop at regular intervals. To throw pure potions at all my poisoned characters and then reorganize it. That's all I want. I just want not that. And the game won't give that to me. Because for some reason it feels that poison is a glorious, challenging mechanic that should be thrown at the player at every opportunity. And I don't know why. I don't like it that way. I do not understand it. Jeb, use your fire stick. Good job there, Jeb. I always knew you'd make a great spellcaster someday. These things aren't actually putting out much damage, um, aside from the fact that I'm poisoned, they're really not doing anything to me at all. Uh, that's why I'm taking the time to just, uh, get several bits of healing out. And now I'll have to take a moment and just... Cure myself of poison, I guess. Anna leveled up, though. That's good for Anna. And there we go. And Jeb goes in front. Uh, I almost got them all back. There we go. Okay. This is a treasure room. It's full of treasure. I like that. There's a sun sword. Uh... I think the Sun Sword is actually an upgrade from 45 damage to 51 damage. Yes, that is an upgrade. And there's some gold. There's a lot more gold. Dragon armor. Uh, which, again, I think is also an upgrade. Uh, 74 and 58. 74 and 58. Uh, again, though, it's a unique piece, so... We're gonna go with the dragon armor. Uh, and we're gonna get rid of... That. Still a challenge leaving the room for, uh, for additional armor that I just find in chests. I think the dragon armor might resist damage from different elements. Uh, that is the Thor's hammer. It is yet another item that casts a spell. So that's gonna go on Anna. That's more... And even more gold. So now I'm sitting at over 260,000 gold. That is awesome. Ooh. This might suck. Yes, if they do that. Oh. Well. That was pretty weak. Uh, Lopo, go ahead and, uh, do your thing. So, now I can do two healing spells per turn. Uh, Jeb and Anna and Lopo can all do magical damage to the entire enemy team every single turn. 
and there is still more spellcasting items to get. In fact, eventually I'm going to have to start making choices about which of these uh, spellcasting items to keep and which to throw out. Because uh, there is only so many spell slots. Or so many equipment slots. I mean, I can carry a grand total of 16 weapons and 16 pieces of armor on my entire party. That is not a lot to work with. <sighs> but I'm really glad to see that it's going well. And especially glad with the fact that Jeb increasingly is turning into an unkillable powerhouse. Except for spell damage, which completely ignores all of his armor and threatens his life every single time. But then it does that to everybody. But in that last dungeon, I'm going to be taking some really major hits. And if those hits fall on Jeb, I'm fine with that. Okay. We made it to the next level. I'm not in the Flying Fortress yet, but I've gone for, like, over a half hour on this episode, and I think it's time to stop. So I will see you all on the next one.